You know, the 2020s had quite the indie game boom, which is weird to think because that was only four years ago. From Hades, Hollow Knight, Pumpkin Jack, Bug Snacks, it was quite a busy year despite everyone being under lockdown for a majority of it. That being said, out of all the indies that I played that year, one game really jumped out at me and caught my attention, and that game being Panzer Paladin. Developed by Tribute Games, who you may know for the more recent game team in T Shredder's Revenge, Panzer plays and feels like a very, very well-developed love letter to classic games that I played growing up as a kid. From Mega Man, DuckTales, and heck, even Zelda 2. This game is a very enjoyable time, although it is very unforgiving. But I, I wanted to finally have a chance to play this game after so long, and now, well, I finally get the chance to actually play through it again after my initial playthrough it a couple years ago and my recent like test playthrough of it. I'm also kind of just wanting to just stay here on the, the menu screen just to listen to this rockin' theme song too because, man, it is really good. But unfortunately, we must open up the gate and jump in, jump into a new game. We're gonna jump into an empty file. Oh wait, I think I'm in the wrong, uh, wrong save profile. I'll be right back. Okay, now that we're back and on the correct file, let's actually jump into the game proper. Uh, we're still gonna start a new game, and as you can see, we got a couple of empty slots. I have put a lot of hours into this game, almost seven hours total. No, about uh, yeah, almost about seven hours. But either way. Let's jump into a new file, let's get a grip on what the story is, and get into our first level, introducing the characters, the gameplay mechanics, as well as the most annoying character in the, in the entire game that you're, we are going to be seeing on repeat visits. I'll be going over the other stuff later, but for the time being, we're just going to jump into the story at the moment. We can play in Classic, we can play on Remix, but we have to beat the game on Classic first to be able to unlock Remix, so we're just going to be jumping into Classic, I guess. We're gonna be playing on normal because, of course, hard, you know, me, as much as I love a challenge. I would like to actually beat this in a timely manner, so we're gonna do it on normal. Two arms! Alright, so, as you can see, the gameplay here feels very Shovel Knight in 2D. Combat's kind of very Zelda 2. Uh, you got a little bit of a bounce move that you can do with uh, if you come on enemies like this. So you can do like a little, like a little pogo attack on them. Why to attack as I've been showing off multiple times. Jump up here. We'll take care of a couple of these knights. Now as you see up in the corner, all weapons have a durability. And as we use our weapons for anything really, such as like poking off enemies, regular attacks, or use them to... Uh, like bounce off of any like structures that we need to get like a little extra boost then it will d decrease the durability and the weapon will be destroyed afterwards you can't repair weapons you can only sacrifice them you for the spells that they have contained inside them and up here we're gonna grab ourselves a spear and I think right here nope uh, there are some false walls in here if something kind of looks out of place then it, nine times out of ten it's a false wall that's contained either a weapon some health or a durability increase, which will help retain weapon durability for the level. Usually it's about the, the size of two walls, but I think it's more so like maybe like right here. Yep, right here. And I was not paying attention to durability, so my weapon just broke right there, but it's okay. We got a backup weapon right here just in case. Alright, press X. Uh, don't do that because it throws your weapons and no matter where the weapon lands, it will get destroyed. So, I would highly recommend that you save throwing your weapons because, it, in my opinion, it is not worth it. Alright, I don't think it's in this level, but in each and every level there is a... Oh, oh there's a hockey stick. Uh, in each and every level, there is a little secret one-off passage that leads to an area that you can get a one-up in. It's kind of out of the way. There, there's usually like a, a small indicator as to what it looks like, but for the time being, all we're doing is finding extra weapons. I don't think in the tutorial level they have that uh, that hidden weapon or that hidden like room. All right. 
We press minus and we eject ourselves and now we get to play as the pilot of our pan uh, of our paladin grid, uh, Flame. She's very weak. Like, incredibly. She's got a whip attack and that's about it. She can use her whip to uh, swing from little grappling points up there, but for the most part, she has a lot less health and if we lose her, then we, we, we die. If Grit were to lose all of his health, then it would actually kick Flame out and sh we'd have to play the rest until we find either one of these or some other means to repair Grit's uh, damage. But these little points right here, uh, you throw the whip into it, it gives you a little bit of charge for Grit, and then you find these spots right here to resummon your Paladin and jump back in. LR, switch weapons. Grab ourselves some more weapons while we're at it. Alright, these things right th here, I'm not going to use it for the time being just because I don't really need to, uh, but these little pedestals are checkpoints. What you do is you sacrifice one of your weapons into here and it will grant you a checkpoint so that way if you die then you get more back to, to this spot instead of having to replay the entire level all over again. But the downside to it is that you have to sacrifice one of your weapons and weapons actually have a use outside of just being useful for spells in the level themselves. Oh wait, is that actually... I think this might be where I need to go. Yep, there we go. Okay, so hidden room. As you see right there, each level has its own unique treasure associated with it, and if we go over here to it, pick it up, we get a 1-up, and also I believe it acts as a full heal. Do this to do a rising attack, get a little bit of a jump boost right there. Nothing right there for the time being. Here, deal with the little double dude. I'm actually going to swap off of my club because that thing's about to break on me. And I think there might be a weapon durability somewhere around here. I think it's one of these walls. Never mind, I lose all my weapons because the creature just decided to go rawr at me and that just caused me to lose everything. But it's fine, we gotta back up right here. This right here will teach us how to use our weapon spells. So we hold ZL and ZR. It breaks the weapon cells. However, it gives us access to the powerful spells that the that's contained inside each of the weapons. Uh, let's see. Yep, right here, got a spear. As you see up in the corner, each of the weapons uh, is unique as each one has its own spell. But there's also a little bit of a rock, paper, scissors method to... Uh, weapons in this game because there's blade, blunt, and piercing type weapons. And I believe that the the method is blade beats blunt, blunt beats spear, and spear beats blade. If I'm completely wrong about that, the feature me is going to pop up on screen right now with the correct uh, the correct order from. Right. So we can't turn around to jump up there, but we can totally get nudged back by the turret over here. But if we press A then we can do a back step, and while you're in the back step, it's basically a dodge, so you are impervious to all damage while I believe you're uh, flashing blue. Head on over here, grab ourselves another weapon. Mm, we're good on health right now for grid, so I don't really see the need to go up there to grab the, grab the, the health tube. this and recharge our spear. That was the, the weapon durability pickup that I mentioned earlier. Alright, we are coming up on a boss fight, and what I like to do is I like to use my weakest weapon for the checkpoints. So I usually like to check the damage. Dirks are a good choice. Uh, there's, there's another weapon later in the... Oh, we're gonna talk about this Dirk because it's almost broken. Uh, there's another weapon that is actually very plentiful later in the game that is like probably the best to use for these checkpoints, but for the time being, we're just going to use that, the Dirk. And uh, let's use a Snow Knife. Alright, there's the creature. It's the Wendigo! Well, that was easy.
You're going to be hearing that tune a lot throughout this game. Instead, the true first boss of the game is the Horseman. The Horseman I is kind of an absolute pushover, to be honest. His attacks are very easy to, to look at, as I, I say, as I keep getting hit. But I, I like to equate this guy as the proto-man of this game. You're going to be seeing him a lot. He's essentially like your rival character in this game. His attacks are very low and winding, except for that little uh, uh, thrust attack that he does. Do that. Jump up down on him. Alright, that, that's the attack I really wanted. You can get at least, like, maybe three good hits in if he does his uh, throw attack. But there he goes. All right, and with that, we get our first cursed weapon of the game. And also flashbanged. What happened out there? It's the end of the world! It's Halloween on Earth! Calm down, Itch. It's not the end. Surely there is a scientific explanation, Doctor? Director, the explanation is that the occult is real and that they've rained down on us. Over the world, satellites have tracked weapon-shaped meteors targeting sites around the globe. Energy readings tell us that these weapons act as portals for enemy troops and keep them pouring into the city. These events have been described by the Pazuzu parchments hidden by the Vatican VI. The Forge will claim the Earth and produce spirit weapons. The Cosmic War shall begin. We're doomed! Not yet. There's always a way. L let me go in, Director. Flame, you're a rescue mission android, not built for warfare. The world needs rescuing now more than ever, and I'm the best rescue mission officer. Ain't that right, Grit? Affirmative. I have yet to have a better co-pilot than you, human or otherwise. See? Your world is beyond rescue. Lay down your weapons or you will fall down to ours. I'm gonna lay down right on your beak! I'm coming for you and your little swords. I, I love the fluidity of the animation. Like, this game does really good fluid uh, pixel art work. Alright, so welcome to the Mega Man aspect of this. We got multiple locations around the globe that we gotta go to. We've got the weapon keepers that we gotta defeat, and we also got the, uh, the names of the keepers and what they are. We already beat the horsemen up in Canada, but we got the weapon keeper Lilith in the USA. We've got the weapon keeper... I'm not even going to try to pronounce that, so I'm just going to let Future Me pronounce it. McLantic Cutley. Uh, we got Dudanios open Scotland. We got Boeoig from Switzerland. We got Medusa in Greece, because of course. We got Baba Yaga up in Russia. We got Anubis in Egypt. The Popobawa in T uh, Tanzania. The, the, the Neon in China. And the uh, Gashikakuro in Japan. But that is not all that's on the, the screen select right now. If we go down to the laboratory by pressing Y. Welcome, Flame. You can upgrade Grid here by melting your weapons, unwanted spear weapons. So we got spear points and we got the spear points needed. You have enough points to make an upgrade. So, this was the other function for weapons that you collect in the field that I mentioned earlier. You can sacrifice the weapons, you can see the spirit points off to the side, 
and you can turn them into health upgrades for grid, which is actually very useful. So we're going to sacrifice our spear. I want to keep the boss weapons as long as possible because they are really good weapons. Uh, let's sacrifice the, the Unak. Mm, maybe the Falchion, but definitely the Snow Knife. I want to keep the club because the clubs are actually really useful because they're uh, large heals. We'll sacrifice another Unak, a Dirk, and that'll be enough. So we got there, and our health has increased by a little bit. It might not seem like much, but the health increase is always very good. And we have enough to upgrade our spirit, our weapons again, but that would take up a majority of our weapons. So we're just going to basically do one upgrade per level. Now, that's not all I wanted to talk about for this. I do want to go back to the menu real quick. And I want to go down here to the blacksmith. The blacksmith is one of the most unique things about Panzer Paladin. You're allowed to create your own custom weapons in this game. And as you can see, I have made quite a number of, of unique weapons in this. Uh, but we also have three empty slots here. But I will show off all the ones that I've made so far. So we got Sword Kirby. We got Link with, with a treasure chest. We got the Crucible from Doom, the energy sword from Halo, Mumbo Staff from Banjo Kazooie, an egg, uh, the Clogger, which was uh, something that a friend uh, asked me to design. It was like, okay, I want you to make, I want you to make a plunger, and I decided to add the toilet paper on top for good measure. We got the, the Taste of Death with with a teacup, and a snowman. But I got three empty spots right here, and I would love for you in the comments to make some suggestions as to what these three empty spots in the blacksmith would be. So definitely uh, leave a comment if you uh, what you think would be a good thing for it. Alright. Uh, down here we got challenge. And basically you just do some challenge uh, runs of each level to... To, uh, to get uh, your uh, like little best times. But that's going to do it for the first episode of Panzer Paladin. Thank you all so much for watching. Next time we jump into the game, we're going to head off to the good old US of A and fight the second weapon keeper of the game, Lilith. See you then. Hey, Einstein, I'm on your side!